Fora TV. The world is thinking. You keep, in your view, improving their ability to control it, the quantity of stuff to be controlled is going to continue to grow dramatically. So, so I think that that's happening with, with, with or without us. I mean, I, I think, you know, if you look at um, tracking cookies on ab advertising networks across the web, some of the work Google is doing and, and others, um, you know, I, I think most people don't actually understand, you know, their, their activities are in some way being tracked online. And I think, again, this comes from this notion of rather than have this silent cookie that's persistent on my browser that may or may not track me across websites, let me make an explicit choice. It's like when I go to Yelp and I review a restaurant, I'm totally fine with that being published back to a profile. If I'm you know, on a shopping site, maybe shopping for an engagement ring, for example, probably don't want that published back. The famous right. case of Beacon so, problem, um, yes. So, so you, know, you, you, you want to get people the control to make overt choices over those things. And I, I think that that, you know, for me personally, and I think for the company is, is you know, and for Mark, absolutely, is a sense of just giving people, again, control to self-represent, con control to, to have uh, decisions about what they do with their data online. Is this the kind of thing you talk about day in and day out when you're, you know, talking to Mark and Chris and these guys? I mean, is this, is this sort of a big issue? Like, how do we manage this? How do we balance these different factors? I mean, I think it's one of the issues. Like, I, I think that, you know, a lot of this stuff boils down to, like I said, um, very difficult product design in terms of how you make these choices. Like, w one of the things that kind of unrelated to privacy I wanted to talk about was, um, you know, you talk about trouble with, you know, people adjusting to changes in the product. And a common question we get, and this is an interesting for those of you doing product design here, is well, why don't you just give me an option to turn it off? Like, whatever you did and changed, just, like, give me an option to go back Revert to the old Revert to the old way. Like, yeah. give me an old, old one. And... In by itself, that, that suggestion is actually quite reasonable. But what you do is you plot that decision over five or six design iterations, and you end up with this product with like 16 different settings. Like, are you on version six or version three, and which way do things get configured? And if you've ever used a product that has a preference panel that's like 13, 13 tabs deep, you know what I'm talking about, which is like there's just way too much configuration. And so that is not the way you build a, a really easy-to-use product. You try and streamline for the for the common to use case. And I, I used to work on Firefox and we had a very similar, actually a very similar problem, which is every release we would endeavor to remove settings from the preferences panel and to try and make it automatic and adapt. And we'd get people upset every time we did it um, because they, there was a segment of users who really wanted that one checkbox on and off. Um, and you know, that really is hard to build a great product if you're kind of building an option for every person in the entire world to do it.